Help us to hold out and to hold on to your unchanging hands. For our souls truly have been anchored.
of Judah. For the Bible says that in chapter 19 that when the Assyrians came upon Judah, the angel of the Lord moved at midnight. Mm. And 185,000 Assyrians were dead by the morning light. Surely mm -hmm. after hearing the news of the defeat of the Assyrians, Hezekiah probably felt like he was on cloud nine. Yeah. Maybe he said to himself, I know the Lord will fight my battles if I just keep still. Or maybe he said, when you turn it over to the Lord, he will work it out. Yeah. No doubt things were going well for Judah and things were going well for Hezekiah. But as much as things are known to go well, it also means that things could also flip and go wrong just as quick as it could go well. Hezekiah, it became a race against the clock. For in our text in chapter 20, we learn that after the defeat of the Assyrians, that Hezekiah became sick yeah. unto death. Yeah. He had a boil that had festered in his body and maybe infected his entire body, began to spread throughout. And the news that Hezekiah received from the prophet of God was not good news. For the news was that Hezekiah, your time is running out. Yeah. This begs the question then, when we consider things I wonder, do we really give thought to the essence of time? Mm -hmm. Do we really give thought to the essence of its being? Yeah. Time is a word that is often taken for granted, and we are all guilty of it, but we are all guilty of wasting it and not using it wisely. The old cliche says that time waits on no man. The American Heritage Dictionary defines time as a non-spatial continuum in which events occur in an apparently irreversible succession from the past through the present unto the future. And I'm sure that many of those who have lived a long time and lived a fruitful life can say that in times was a good value to them. For when they were young, time really didn't matter a whole lot to them. But now that they are old, they can look back over the years and say, for some, they wish I had just a little more time. Or, I wish my days would have been better. But to our youth now, it doesn't mean to matter much to them, because to them, just like those of old who was once young, but now they're old, time may not be of importance. Oh, but to, to our youth out there, I'm going to tell you, just wait a while. All you got to do is just live a little while longer. And just wait, because I tell you, just as precious as time is now, when you get older, you will see that time is just as more precious as ever before. You see, time is one of the most valuable and gracious things that God has given to us. We can waste our money, and that's okay. Because we believe that we can get our money back. We believe that with enough time, we can earn more than what we lost. Oh, but time is something that you just can't get back because time waits on no man. If we utilize it more effectively and we utilize it more purposely, then we realize that we can't earn it back, we can't negotiate it back, and we definitely I'm not talking about the chronological time. No, I'm talking about Kairos time. That God eternal time clock. In other words, what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, that to everything there is a time and there's a season. And the measure of man is relative to time and Kairos. The measure of man is relative to God's time. He may see three score and ten, and if by reason of strength, that he might see four score more and may be filled with trouble. I know Grandmama used to say when she used to get up, Ooh, help me, Lord. She would cry out and say those things. And I used to wonder why she would say that. She said, boy, you just live long enough. And you see yourself in time. You will also have those things. And you will have those things. For everybody, every one of us under the sound of my voice, we have a day that is numbered. And our name is on the time clock of eternity. We will not live a second more or a second less than what God has already predetermined in our life. 
So as we look at Hezekiah's situation carefully, I would like to share two thoughts as to why I believe, regardless of time, that we should put everything that we have, everything that we're going through, no matter what it is, we should put it all in God's hands. As we look at Hezekiah, and we learn that Isaiah comes to him and he tells him, Hezekiah, you're going to die. It's time for you now to get your house in order. We wonder, how would you and I receive that information? If the man of God, the prophet of God, when the doctor walk in and he say, you don't have long, you got to get your house in order. How do we receive it? The Bible says that Hezekiah went into prayer. Hezekiah went into prayer. The first thing I will tell you, we must take time out to pray. Not pray because we are in dire straits. Not pray because we are in a situation that may not seem well, but we ought to pray to the one who is able to do all things but fail. In other words, the Bible says that when Hezekiah heard the news, he turned his face to the wall and he began to pray. As a person who had lived for a short while, I come to tell you that time alone with God is a rewarding and precious opportunity that many of us have. And the truth is, there will come a time in life when we must remove ourselves, when we must get away from everybody and from everything that is going on around us. Like Hezekiah, there's going to be a time when we, we cannot seek the advice of our friends and our family. We cannot report to them about everything that we're going to. We have to steal away into our closet and have a little talk with Jesus. That's why I'm saying the song about the prayer closet. Come on in the room, Lord. Jesus is our doctor, right? He knows all about us. He write down our prescriptions. Give us all of our medicine in our prayer room. Yes, there's a place that you and I can go if we desire to seek the answers from God. And that place is called our prayer room. That place like John the Baptist is called that hour of Patmos. That place to where we become isolated from everybody else. So God can insulate us to be able to be men and women of strong faith. Yeah. I'm not talking about the place that you used to go to where everybody gathers. No, I'm talking not about a physical place. But I'm simply talking about a place where we can go and seek God's face. Yeah. A place where there's peace. Place where there's tranquility. Yes. Place that is conducive to time and separation. A place where you have to turn off all distractions, get away from the television, put the cell phones down. A place where you can go and listen to the Lord speak. A place where you can have a quick talk and a quiet talk between you and God. That's why the songwriter said, just a little talk with Jesus. We'll make it right. Mm -hmm. This place I'm talking about is not a fun place. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's in that place that some tears are going to fall. Yes, some pain and suffering you may have to endure. But in that place, it's necessary for you to hear the word of God and to make your petitions known unto him. And our text, Hezekiah now finds himself in that place as he understood quite well what the options were. The scripture says in those days Hezekiah became healed and was at the point of death. And if that wasn't bad enough, he was told, get your house in order. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody were to come and tell me to get my house in order, it would cause me to seek God quick too. I know that we all want to live a long life. I know that we all want to continue to enjoy the life that we're in. However, the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, went to Hezekiah and said, this is what the Lord says. This ain't what the doctor said. This is not what somebody heard, somebody said. He said, this is what the Lord said. Put your house in order. Because you're going to die and you will not recover. After hearing this, the Bible tells us that Hezekiah was devastated for two reasons. One is because he wanted to live and he felt that his faithfulness and his obedience to God was proof enough that he could live a long life. Secondly, because the Bible said that he kept the commandments of God, he kept the old covenant of God, and that somehow 
trouble will not come its way. But yet the title, just like all of us, each and every one of us will have to go through something sometime. So when Hezekiah heard this, I can imagine what he was thinking in his mind as he went to a whirlwind, asking himself questions while reminding God of his devotion and his faithfulness towards him. I can imagine him saying, Lord, I walk with you like you told me to walk with you. So why has this happened to me? I kept a high level of integrity towards you and I served you faithfully. So why? has this sickness now come on my body. I kept the highest standards of morality. I wasn't like my forefathers. I was blessed to be called by you. So why do I have to get my house in order? I do not, and I did not follow the instructions of others, but I did everything that you told me to do. Why do you Many of us have asked the same question. Felt the same way that Hezekiah did. Yet, like Hezekiah, we too had to seek God in the midst of our moments. And it's God alone who we are to call on. Yeah. Using my spiritual imagination, I believe when Hezekiah heard the news, he made everybody leave the room. As he began to turn and face the wall, and he began to pray fervently. He didn't have to go into the house of God, into the temple to pray, because all he needed to do was seek God right there where he was. Yeah. In other words, there's going to come a time when you've got to get people out of the way and use the space that you have. You don't have to go to some exalted place to talk to God. All you have to do is tune out everything and everybody from around you, and there you can have a little talk with Jesus. This is why as Christians, there will come a time when we need to seek God away from the crowd. You know, being in a crowd is, could be a problem because there are dangers waiting in the crowd. Sometimes people might pat you on your back to wish you well, but at the same time, wishing that you would fall along the wayside, or wishing that your health is so bad that you can get out of the way and they can step in and take over. If the guy needed time with God, so he turned his face to the wall and he began to pray. James 5, 16 tells us, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. See, like Hezekiah, we all face challenges that will make us seek God's face. For in this life, if we live long enough, we will have to make a closer journey with the Lord also. So I believe while Hezekiah was praying in his closet, he reminded the Lord of all that he had promised him. I can hear him saying, Lord, I have not been that good all the time, but you said in your word that if I, you would hear the prayers of the righteous. You said if I needed anything, all I had to do was call on your name and whatever I If I knock, the door will be open unto me. So here I am, Lord, right now standing in the need of Christ. And as we look at the text, we can see the situation that Hezekiah was in. I can see his hope, and I can see faithfulness in action. As Hezekiah believed that only God could hear his plea and deliver him from all of his afflictions. Yes, and this tells me this morning, my beloved, that no matter what you may be dealing with, there's a need to keep the faith and believe that God hears and God answers prayers when we call on his name. Jeremiah 29, 13 says that you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Church, I tell you, whatever you need, God's got it. But we got to put it all in his hands. Yeah. Second thing Hezekiah did is that we need to know that our condition mm -hmm. is not our conclusion. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah had to rest on his faith yeah. in knowing that no matter what the circumstance was, right. it was not his finality in life. Some of you listening right now may have concluded that your circumstance is so bad that that's it. 
that's how it's going to end. Yeah. Maybe you think that way because you have an illness or because you have a serious problem that's going on and it don't seem like anybody can help you and it doesn't seem like you're going to get it right and that you actually believe to yourself that God cannot heal your, your problem. Well, I come to tell you and to remind you that no matter what your condition may be, my brothers and sisters, it is not your conclusion. Drugs might be your condition, but let me tell you, in Jesus Christ, it is not your conclusion. Alcohol, fornication, sickness, unemployment, homosexuality, lying, and even death might be your condition, but I'm going to tell you, it's not your conclusion. It is not final, for if you call on the name of the Lord, he will come and he will answer you in the midst of your distress. Or you might ask, how can you say these things, Pastor, when I've been going through for such a long time? Preacher, you don't understand. I have all these children out of where y'all. I have no job, and the government now calling me to pay child support. What am I going to do? I've got a record. I've been arrested four times and I can count, and nobody wants to hire me. Well, in my reply to you, I say, is there anything too hard for God to work out? It is not hard because God can work it out if you put it all in his hands. Yes, just ask Hezekiah. And he'll tell you that prayer without faith is useless. Yes, for when the enemy came to destroy Jerusalem, he began to pray and God stepped in. And when he needed the word from the Lord, he knew where to go, where he could get that word. I was there that Hezekiah went to the man of God who began to talk on behalf of God about the situation surrounding Judah. Yes, he didn't pray that God would give him a great army to fight his battle. No, he called the man of God, the prophet Isaiah, to go and inquire of the Lord. And Hezekiah, in his prayer, learned the importance of putting it all in God's hands. So as I come to the close today, I want to leave you with some good news. In the midst of what you're going through, I want to leave you with some good news to let you know that your condition is not your conclusion. For the Bible says in 2 Kings 20 and 4, before, I, before Isaiah left the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him and said, go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David said, I have heard your prayers. And I have seen your tears, and I will heal you. For on the third day from now, you will go to the temple, and I will add 15 years to your life. Hezekiah humbled himself before the Lord. And when he humbled himself before the Lord, guess what? The Bible said the Lord heard his cry. And not only did he humble himself, but Hezekiah lamented in the presence of the Lord. And when he cried out to the Lord, the Bible said that he wiped Hezekiah's tears away. He gave him 15 years more to live. So it is telling me that the Holy Spirit is saying to us today that when we humble ourselves before the Lord, he will grant us our petitions, whatever it might be. If he believe in going to work for our goodness, but also for his glory. From there I can see that your condition is not your conclusion. Why? Because God will meet you in your prayer closet when you call on his name. Yes, I challenge you now to put it all in his hands. You see, in God's hands, he can do more with it than you or I can. For the psalmist tells us in Psalms 37, 3 through 6, Trust in the Lord yeah. and do good. Yeah. Dwell in the land and be befriended faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as light and your justice as the noonday. Psalm 125 and 1 through 2 says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround his people. And from this time forth and forevermore. Therefore I tell you, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lead not to your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him. And guess what? He shall direct your path. Yes, put it off.
in God's hands. And to do that, we got to trust that in God's hands, God can do it all. Hezekiah did that, and he trusts God. And not only did he trust God, but he saw God working in his favor. Yes. You see, to get what you ask for depends on whose hands mm -hmm. you are going to trust mm -hmm. to fulfill what you ask. The basketball in my hand might be worth $19, mm -hmm. but in the hands of Michael Jordan, they tell me it's worth 30 Depends on whose hands you're putting it in. A baseball in my hand might be worth six dollars. But if you put it in the hands of Hank Aaron, they tell me that it might be worth 19 million dollars. It depends on whose hand you're putting it in. A tennis racket in my hand might be useless. But if you put it in the hands of Serena Williams, they tell me that she's going to win a Wimbledon championship. It all a rod in my hand might keep away my enemies, but a rod in Moses' hand that stretch it out and open up a red sea for them to walk across. It depends on whose hand you put it in. Two fish and five loaves of bread in my hand might be two fish sandwiches and a piece of bread. But if you put it in Jesus' hand, they tell me that he can take two fish and five loaves of bread. Church 
them. And they're outside, they're like I said, they've been saved, but they're kind of staggering along the roadside. And they're wondering how they're going to get back home. I say, repent, rededicate yourself, renew. Go back to where you came from. And if going back to where you came from may not be good for you, and you believe you need a new start, 684 Rutledge Avenue, downtown historic talk. We are right here standing, waiting to fellowship and commune with you. And all you've got to do is just bring yourself and trust God and watch what God will do in your life. We thank you, Father God, for your preached word. We thank you for the songs that were sung, the prayers and the scriptures that were made. But above all, Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ, who is the healer and the deliverer of our circumstances and our situations. Help us to put it all, put it all, everything in your hand. We ask this now in Jesus.